What's up, everybody? We are live here at the National in Atlantic City, and we got Lil Pole Man in the house. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. How's the show been treating you so far? Pretty good. My goal is to spend $5 million at That's the show. That's crazy. How are you going to do that, dude? We're probably like a tenth of the way there. Jeez, sweet. <laughs> Most sweet. Singles, wax, both? All wax for now. Yeah. All wax. All high-end wax. Yeah. Uh, what's on your radar product-wise? The main thing, my creme de la creme is... Prism, NT, and Flawless. Those nice. three, especially Prism. We go through a lot of Prism. Nice, nice. What are you you're looking for, like, 12, 13 Prism? Um, honestly, football, basketball, like, 17 and up. Oh, okay. okay. 17 and up. Okay. Nice. The older your stuff is, it's good, but it's it's harder to break. So many know? dud players by that time, too. So many bad rookies. Yeah, the 12, 13, you got the, you got the dual rookie class, though. Yeah. Which That's cool. first year Prism. Yeah, yeah. it's a first year Prism. We have a, we have a box floating around. Yeah. We used to be able to get boxes for fifty bucks. That was nice, but you know. I used to I used to sell Luca year prison boxes at four hundred bucks. Jeez, they're crazy. five thousand today. Yeah, That's insane. <laughs> well, and we, uh, we used to give away for hitless packs thirteen fourteen prison. Wow, Just, nobody wanted it. So nobody what we used it. to do is if you went hitless in our breaks, we would give a hitless pack, and it was all thirteen fourteen prison. Because we had to buy today. Those those packs are. I think yeah, the I don't, box is like ten grand or something like that. The amount of silver Giannis rookies that we gave away is probably astounding. And honestly, it was people that were in like baseball breaks, and they were like, <laughs> I don't want this basketball crap. They'd probably throw them away. They're probably throwing <laughs> the cards away. If they didn't get an autograph back then, they were just throwing them away. Yeah, because in order to get in T, 14, 15, I believe, you had to get you had to buy three cases of 13, 14 at 40 bucks a box. And people weren't buying? No. Oh, no. Nobody wanted it. No. <laughs> Only wanted the NT, the autographs, the, the relics. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't even in Logo was, Man back then. Nope. In, yeah. in those sets. What a That's time. What a time. It feels like it was 30 years ago. I know. It really wasn't that long ago. Dude, That's years. crazy. That's, That's crazy. <laughs> it's nuts. So how, tell us how you got started, man. What was the inspiration? So when I was a kid, I was always into sports cards. Yeah. Uh, mainly Pokemon, not really sports. Mm -hmm. I've always played sports as a kid. Um, but I loved Pokemon. I would always beg my dad to go to Target and open up the Pokemon nice. packs all the time. You still have some of that? Um, I have a binder of actually like all the Pokemons from when I was a little kid. Nice. nice. And uh, I stopped doing cards and I got into sneakers. I started to buy and sell sneakers and I did really good in that industry. Yeah. And I was always good at catching on to the new trends. And for me, this is pretty new. I've only been in this for about two, three years. Feels like you've been in longer for some reason, how well your name's out there. So. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you've done a good job marketing yourself. Um, so yeah, from sneakers, it kind of was dying down for me, and a bunch of my friends started saying these cards were selling for thousands of dollars and very expensive cards, and I wanted to get in, and I loved sports. I loved basketball and football. I played basketball in high school throughout my whole life. Nice. I played varsity. I was always playing with the older kids, and... Oh, they're, they're going crazy. They are they're, going crazy. they're losing their minds. I they're, love it. They're so happy that we're doing this podcast Actually, right now. Actually, they're, they're, they're throwing boxes out there. Maybe oh. they'll throw it over here. Yeah, they got one of the guns. <laughs> so from sneakers, I transitioned into cards. And a, actually a good friend of mine who I used to work for, Mikey. Yeah. Um, wax. Yeah. Nice. He thought I'd be a good breaker, so he brought me on. And we worked out of his apartment for two, a year, a year and a half in literally the kitchen table. Nice. Um, long story short, I branched out and did my own thing, opened up Lil Pole Man, and started in November of 2020. And it grew from a hobby that I did at night with me and my girlfriend. Yeah. My ex-girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, a huge business. And it scaled from literally something that I was doing for fun, something into a, a real business. And I, I moved around. I went from breaking in my bedroom in 100 square feet to breaking at my grandparents' house when I had to when my mom moved out. Yeah. Broke out of my grandparents' house for 6 months. From there broke out of my brother's house and then finally I got an office. Nice. Um, actually sorry. I I moved out. I moved out from my parents' house when yeah. I was 18. Wow. And I broke from home in my dining in, in my den there was a den area yeah we broke from home for four months and wow. then i was like i can't take this anymore it was <laughs> working and living together was I not get it. Um, and how'd your parents deal with the noise right you'd be like pulling yeah. a super frat or pulling a black prism or something like that and go crazy i right? pulled 
at 3.30 in the morning when I broke in my grandparents' house. My grandparents were 75 years old. <laughs> so I broke a black old lamello at 3 in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> Prism. Wow. wow. So they thought, like, the building was burning down. <laughs> They woke up there. What's going on? Yeah, they just pulled a little mellow. They're like, okay. Yeah, so I, de I, I definitely. Yeah, I love that story. We did the same exact thing. We were breaking from our kitchen table yep, yep. back in 2010. So I love that. I love that organic story that you have. That's awesome. Yeah. So I moved into a, an office now, 1,800 square feet, and like I said, it grew from me and my girlfriend to now I have nine employees, and I'm about to. So you don't have to ship any cards anymore yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the grind. Yes. That's that's the grind behind when, the grind. When's the last time you sorted a break? I help out all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so do we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do we? I just can't help. I can't help myself. I love it. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's sorting, breaking, shipping, the yeah. whole thing I love. Yeah. Hands I, on. I like it. I love what I do. So. And you want to make sure, especially you pull a big card, you want to make sure that, you know, you're making sure it goes in the right package. You that, know. that too. You know, you pull a $100,000 card, you're like, okay. You know, we just pulled the the shield Mac Jones and the guy we had like NT? We, yeah no flawless flawless oh I saw that yeah yeah it's yeah. on release day yeah, yeah. Uh, like that literally our first case it, so insane we flew the who, guy out who broke it he did I, when you were running around yeah. I was <laughs> laughing at your reaction yep that was me <laughs> he was right he was like <laughs> he started running. yeah luckily we have our security camera so I just pulled the footage yeah that was amazing around. yeah amazing and amazing. Cody did the edit and we got it all out there and. Amazing cool. clip. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, we wind up like we're like, shit, this could be like a two fifty, three hundred thousand dollar card, you know, potentially. Did you ship that card? No, we flew the guy out. Oh, we paid for his flight, and everything. He uh, he got to enjoy the Bay Area for a little bit, and uh, he picked it up in person. Wow. So what just, did he buy the box or he? No, he bought the Patriots for the case. So I think I think it was like what a two thousand dollar spot. Two thousand dollar spot. I think he bought the Patriots in like the first like three or four case breaks we did so and we actually hit a mac jones uh mac jones in all four cases it was like it was like consecutive so you got like four mac jones dude <laughs> it was crazy luck the guy i think last year at the national the justin herbert shield got hit and i think the guy joined the filler and somehow got the chargers wow. for like 70 dollars. oh my god <laughs> sold wow. the card for five hundred thousand, and wow. it's worth probably two and a half million today that's insane yeah. That, those are good stories when it's like a one pack or it's like a fill, like cheap price point to get in and get cards like that. Yeah, yeah. It's life changing. I could never imagine that you know people would be able to take cards and like maybe potentially buy a house out of what the sale was from one single card. That's modern. You know, we're not talking about the mantle that's like for fifteen million out here. We're talking about a fresh rookie. Yeah, I you mean, know, it, it's like crazy. Well, it's crazy in thinking about that because even. 10 years ago you would somebody put like a price point at like five thousand dollars on a card and people would be like sticker shock you'd be yeah. like you're like what like, when i first found out that there were, a card was worth a thousand dollars like a piece of yeah cardboard yeah. literally yep. plastic yeah i i was like okay i gotta do cards yeah, yeah. no yeah. more sneakers yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know when we were breaking it was the 2012 nfl rookie class it was andrew luck rg3 yes and it was like i think andrew lux were like 500 bucks which was like a lot we're like wow there's a card going for like 500 dollars. that's autograph. russell wilson too no? hey russell yep. wilson yeah. yep yep and the one who emerged uh nick Foles. Yeah. um a few good guys out of that year that trent class. richardson yep trent Rich. richardson yeah yep so um what's like some of the biggest polls you guys have had like recently i know you um, mentioned the black gold black gold lamello we've hit so much good stuff um we had a one of our biggest probably our biggest hit was a John Morant National Treasures RPA Emerald out of five. Wow! Nice. And this was when John Morant was yeah the that peak. guy. Yeah, like, yeah. This is this and is when John. And you just pulled a uh, out of FOTL. You pulled a Mac Jones. Uh, was the what, what do they call the, the FOTL Stripe, parallel? Stars, stars and stripes. Yeah, stars and stripes. Yeah. Yeah. We That's hit, a big one. We've hit a couple of those. Um, I mean, we hit the on release day of NT first off the line. We hit a Cade Cunningham Nike swoosh RPA out of three. Nice. Oh, I did see that one too. Nice. Um, we fit. I mean, a you bunch had a of picture logo. with it outside or something, right? Yeah. So the guy who hit it, actually, a buddy of mine, flew us out on a jet to oh, Orla wow. to Orlando to deliver him the card. Oh, jeez. Left at ten and came back at two two o'clock. Oh nice. man, nice. Yeah. Um, that is amazing. I mean, we broke a ton of flawless NT. We fit Prism Gold Lamelo, Black Gold Lamelo, Gold Edwards Prism. I hit a out of five NT of Edwards, a Gold NT of Edwards. Um, We've hit some, some good stuff. Zion RPA is at NT out of 99. The list goes. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. It's hard to yeah. remember after a while, right? Yeah. Um, how, uh, 
Challenge-wise, uh, well, for, first of all, you guys are on Instagram, right? You yeah. Do most of your breaks on Instagram? So we started on Instagram. We still break on Instagram. We just recently expanded to Whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I have a breaker. His name is Jacob. He breaks over there on Whatnot nice. for us. And I still go on Instagram. Nice. How are you finding uh, Whatnot compared to Instagram? Whatnot's amazing. I really like it. I yeah. know. It's so it's, fast it's, and simple. It, yeah. for, the u for the end user, it's so easy. It's no. It's very simple and fast pace. It, yeah. goes, it goes quick. It, you don't have to type in your address, the website. It's one button and boom. Yep, and you're buying. Yeah, I know. We, we love it too. We've been on there for about three months now, I think. So slowly but surely. Your guys' main channel is YouTube? Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. yeah, so people buy from our website, mojobreak.com, and then they watch it on YouTube. Got it. So that's why we, I think we had a little bit of a problem doing stuff on Instagram because, you know, people said PayPal. But we also have our website funneling through PayPal. So it's like, did that payment come? You know, So we're like, Whatnot was a great thing because it's like a whole new separate, store. Separate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was able also, to. Also, they, they handle all, God forbid, any chargebacks or anything like that. Yeah, I don't think we've had any. No, I mean, we haven't. I mean, it's been really, I mean, the only thing is we have it set up. You probably have it set up as well where, like, some accounts, you don't get paid until it shows delivered. Correct. But if you're dealing with the post office and you have shipped a bunch of packages, sometimes the post office, they, they, don't, they don't scan anything in. So, like, there won't be any updates. So that is the, uh, that's the only issue that we have. We have it set up now where, like, they just pay us out. Like, we, we've been doing it for 12 years. Like, they know we're not they going know anywhere. Breaks, yeah. They know Mojo Breaks the real deal. So, yeah. yeah. Um, First couple of weeks it was, like, I don't know if we got paid on that one because it didn't get delivered. And it was probably just, cause, you know, you got to ship something. So, like, you know, if we're doing an NT break and there's only eight cards, we'll ship them base cards or something just so they but get I, packaged. But, I mean, I get why they do it. I mean, I completely understand from, yeah. like, protection of the consumer. Um, you you got to have those protections and, and checks and balances put in place. There's a lot of, uh, on the other end, there's a lot of people that, there's a lot of shady people that yeah. I've oh, been yeah. burnt a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, in any industry you have. Of course. Yeah. Bad so, apples. Yeah, yeah the they, they ruin the rest of the sure. bunch, right? So, you know, one guy, you know, you hear all the controversy. It's like that. that is louder than the positivity in the hobby a lot. More people are drawn into the negativity. I mean, I'm sure you have comments, you know, you see, and we have comments that we yeah, see. And it's like there's a bunch of guys that like it, but there's that one negative comment that's just like, you know. Sometimes it's more it's more negative than it is positive. Yeah, it is. 100%. Yeah, and you just you can't take it personal either. You just gotta let it let it roll off. Let people get their their outlet, however they want to. Actually, it makes me. It feels me. It makes yeah. me want to work harder. I like that. And do better. I like that. Yeah. I've I've told myself that I'm glad they're commenting. You got to look at it that way because you know algorithms. The more you, comments you have, the more you're gonna rank, right? So, uh, I'd better them not say something negative than not comment at all. I guess. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> they're putting their time and energy into you, so. Yep. You have to be doing something right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you see some of the most successful Instagram people, and there's it's like 50-50 split on negativity to positivity. Yeah, if it's so not more. Exactly. It's negative. Yep. How do you deal with that? Do you respond or you just let it go? When I first started, I, it got to me. Yeah. Like, I wasn't used to it. Yeah. And now I used to be very like, you know, under the radar. I don't really like people knowing what I'm doing, but now it's like. It's a brand thing, so yeah. it's like it's good that people are knowing what's going on. And, exactly. Um, so now I just, like I said, I let it, I let it fuel my fight. Like I, it makes me want to work harder and do better. And honestly, their words are just like comments to me. Yep. Yeah. Nothing. Exactly. And how do you get into? I mean, I know you're very active. How do you find time to like do breaks and then also create content to help sell the breaks? How do you find that balance? It's hard. I mean, yeah. I I recently I went from. Three months ago, I was one person. One, I was one person, and now I have a team of eight people. So now it's a little bit easier for me sure. to delegate responsibilities yeah. and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I need I need a, a better content creator, more more vlogging. Um. Do you take a step back for that, or do you try to say like that's not as good as I would do? I mean, I try I try to focus more on you know the wax and the breaking and let them handle all the other stuff. Sure. Because I know what I know and. I don't know about content or this or that. Yeah, so exactly. I try to focus on what I know yep. and bring on people that know that what I don't know, so that so they can help. And exactly. Bring. Yep. Yeah. That's, I, that's why I say I'm all, I'm I'm dumb and I have a smart people around me. So you know to make make me seem smart. No, I love to hang around people that are smarter and older than me, so I can learn. And I've o I've always had a good support system, and I've always I've always liked to hang around people that are smarter and more knowledgeable exactly and we like yeah. the the youth movement you know including yourself of this hobby you know and i think it's great because it's like there's a bunch of different options 
uh, you guys motivate us because, like, you know, we could find ourselves, like, I know myself personally. I don't know if I'm speaking for Dan, but, you know, you get complacent after 12 years. You know, stuff gets – I don't want to say you're not necessarily motivated by it. I'm still motivated by it. But, like, oh, there's a new idea or there's a fresh idea. That's motivating to me to, like, try to recreate myself. You know it, what I it's mean? What, it's what this industry needed. This industry needed to – and we always talk about – before it was from getting the kids involved as like collectors but what we needed was young entrepreneurs who came in and kind of keep the old guard on their toes yeah so um i think what the next this generation that you're doing right i think it's great yeah i think it's great i think you guys are doing a great job i think from a content standpoint you're basically making us step up our game yep and um yeah Dan's yeah, gonna, we, mad, mad love. Dan's going to do TikTok dances. He's, he's getting ready I'm, for man, it. Man, I'm trying, man. <laughs> trying. Are you guys, you guys break anywhere else besides whatnot in YouTube? A loop. So we try How's to that? go. Every, um, it's more personal boxes over there. Uh, not as many breaks. So we were doing personal boxes on YouTube three times a week. And it was starting to get a little slow. So I said, you know, let's give loop a try. And so we've been on there for, what, what a couple weeks now. So it's, yeah. it's still early in the process with them. We did the 10 case break with them last night. But... Um, you know, just trying to get like different avenues, revenue sources coming in. I'm 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 trying to open a, a YouTube for only baseball. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're starting a baseball channel. Nice. On like Bowman and all that. Other yeah, all yeah. Bowman stuff. Yeah. I personally don't know that much. I'm still learning about baseball, but I've been buying a lot of wax. You know, when we started, baseball was number one, and I feel like baseball is like third now. So there's definitely a need for more baseball guys because you know people don't want to deal with base. Like these other breakers don't want to. You know, a lot of breakers just want to do the eight cards, and that's it. You know, you got to sort the base with the Bowman, and people don't want to deal with that. So that's a good niche to get into. Is it hard to start a YouTube channel? Um, how do you get? Because I don't know how that works. But you know, just getting subscribers. It seems a little tougher to get subscribers, but if you're making like good content people are going to come so maybe like you know having your breaks and then having content too with it so that maybe like your content of you walking around the show I mean, or whatever dealing with baseball cards gets people to that then they also see that you have breaks there too you know i mean, I mean? the easiest easiest and most obvious way to to get a subscribers is like do giveaways have people subscribe do free breaks and stuff like that yeah but it's funny because youtube is like i don't know if it's going to be as prevalent as it is 10 years from now you know are people going to be on eBay Live, or more people going to be on WhatNot Live, or more. You know, I mean, there's going to all there's still gonna be, be there. so many different platforms that are yeah, going to come right. out, especially in the next 12 months. Like, yeah, eBay's coming out. Gary V's going to do a live platform. And yeah, there's Fanatic. They're all. There's yeah. Fanatics is probably going to go to towards one or make their own at some point. You know, so I think they knows. make. I think they make their own. Yeah, right. That's what that's My what our opinion. bet is too. I think, yep. I'd bet on. What that. do you guys What do you guys think about um, the distributors? You think they're going to stay around when Fanatics is still still <sighs> here? It's tough. I think they're going to need them to sell the the at least the base heavy stuff. You know, like the heritages, the top series ones, the stuff that's more mass produced. I think they're <sighs> going to be around. It, it's gonna. It's not going to be what we see right now. It's so, going to be so people are not going to be getting ten cases allocated for. At, you know, if, if the uh, tops numbers is any indication, you know, it's going to probably start to dwindle down and. Who knows with Panini, right? I mean, their their time is limited. Are they done after? It, well, the licenses are going to be gone at some point. I mean, they've got the football license gone, the basketball license gone. They bought the collegiate license now. They've, I think they maybe have WWE again. WWE, and, yeah, they, so it's yeah, like, I mean, it, it's just they, they're not going to have some, anything at a certain point. They're, so. As the days go by, they're losing leverage, it seems like, so... That's that's what I was taking in. Yeah. From yeah, and, and and then you know, not it's, it's kind of like their price right now is going to kind of maybe start going lower because they're going to have less time of the license. Yep. Like, so fanatics, and I love you know Panini, so I hope it kind of they keep them intact. Yeah, but I love them. In a, in a perfect world, I would love to have two manufacturers, or two. I mean, two share it. I mean, again, like how did, did Cody just fall? <laughs> <laughs> did we did we lose one? <laughs> um, what was I saying? Um, <laughs> perfect world, two perfect manufacturers. World, yeah, two manufacturers, and that would basically raise the bar. Like one manufacturer can't dictate what the market is going to be. I like, like that. Yeah. Like, I like so that. basically, like if if NT comes out and then Tops has like a product that's five star high football, end, like or five star football. Like they have to basically compete with that, and they're just going back and forth. I and like that. At the end of the day, who wins? is the collector, the end user, the consumer. Like imagine if Panini came out with Flawless and Fanatics did National Treasures. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 Or somehow you would love to see some of the exquisite stuff come back for basketball, right? So you have National Treasures, Flawless, and then you have Exquisite too, and then Black, and you know, 
you know, in a perfect world, I almost would like Fanatics to be like, here, Panini, here's a licensing deal. You're just going to pay us for the license and then continue to do that. Yeah, but like kind of like probably sub, not going to happen that way. the license, probably not going to happen. Um, I think that would be best for collectors because then you have, you know, like the optic stuff that people are complaining about, the surface damages. Maybe it's, you know, well, Fanatics, is not, Tops Chrome doesn't have damage, so you guys need to step up your game, and maybe that... I think ultimately a competition would make it better for collectors, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, that's, I never even thought about that. That's a good, yeah. that's a good way to put it. Yeah. In a perfect world, that would be pretty good for us. Yeah, it would. For everybody. It would. Be, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. So what are your plans? I know you got the baseball uh, thing going on, um, and what's the, uh, what's, the, what's the goals for the next year? So I signed a three-year deal lease for my office space at 1,800 square feet, and I've been there for four months, and I'm about to move out of there tomorrow oh geez like <laughs> to a f- like sublease it yeah no they're gonna because it's in the same area so they're gonna just let me co- go up oh that's nice. and it's gonna be like a 5500 square foot wow space with, nice with 18 built out offices wow instead nice. of only two or three nice. so you're gonna be trying to actively getting some uh, other breakers involved and stuff yeah <laughs> what's going on um yeah definitely growing and trying to get some more breakers and expand like youtube other platforms 100 uh, percent. yeah my, I only did basketball and football when I first started. Now I started, then I got into a little bit of soccer. I started to do a little bit of F1. Um, but I want to do everything. I want to do baseball. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you could somehow even turn that into a shop, you might be able to get an upper deck. You know, you can start doing hockey and stuff like that, too. You know, there's, a, there's Ho- actually a good market for hockey. Hockey is my favorite sport to watch in person. Yeah, yeah love absolutely. hockey. It's great. Love. Well, who's your team? The Panthers. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. We just had Doug Plagans. Uh, he's a friend of ours. From the, he's a the radio broadcaster for the Florida Panthers. Okay. So he called, he's a big collector, and he's been on our uh, podcast. So came by this. And he actually does some breaks for Fanatics, too. So That's awesome. Yeah, he's involved in the hobby. So um, so let, let everybody know where they can find you and get in on some breaks. Um, well, our Instagram is Lil Pullman, L-I-L-P-U-L-L-M-A-N. And our whatnot is House of Wax. We go live seven days a week. And we do a lot of high-end personals and a lot of random team breaks. Nice. How many breaks do you guys do a week now? Well, Whatnot's pretty new for us. We've only been on there for about a month. Mm-hmm. Um, but on Instagram, we mainly just do personals. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. So, yeah, you got the people buying flawless cases and stuff like that? Yeah. And, and like, when the new release comes out, I always buy a lot of it on uh, quantity. Yeah. Um, just because, and not many people have quantity. Like, when NT First Off the Line basketball came out this year, I bought, like, 18 cases Jeez. and we were the first ones to ha- actually have it and everybody else that had it only had like two or three cases yeah so once they were sold out like there was nowhere to buy it other than us nice on release day yeah. the first off the line is always so hard i'm like well, we're gonna buy it at this price and it's like it's tough to tough to judge where you're gonna to judge, jump in man. yeah it's uh i've it's a, i've won i've lost I've, oh yeah, oh, yeah big yeah, time yeah that's true fotl is, is yeah, I think we're in last year's. We still have like 40 boxes of last year's Prism at like three grand, and it's like I think people are buying it for like 2,200 now. So it's like are they put in breaks and stuff? They're doing Dutch auction on uh, Eminence, right? Are they? Are they? I think it's going to come out at a set price. Set price? Are you guys going to be breaking some of that? We are. We didn't get much, but we're, yeah, looking, we're, we're, we're actively looking for more, possibly. But I'm going to wait and see what it, how it breaks down on Friday. It's the first year they're doing that. They did it for first basketball, but, yeah, never done it for yeah, football. First, uh, yeah, first year for football. Yeah, first yeah. year for football. They did uh, soccer and Kobe. Soccer, Kobe, and then what year was it for basketball, the first year? It was the Wiggins year, 14-15. 14-15. And then they brought it back for the Zion year. And yep. For whatever, it's like weird how they they do it, that they don't do it. And yeah. And then they had the then they had the Kobe Eminence, which we could not sell. Yeah, could, could not, get not sell it. And then obviously when he, you know with the tragedy, like twenty, thirty grand or something, people were paying for it. <laughs> so that's, that's nuts. Because it was as a break, it was just Kobe's. It's like there's, you know people are like, oh, I just get a Kobe. Yeah. No, I don't. You know, I, there's no logo and, man or and, chase or anything. And Kobe at that point was in everything. Yeah. Like every single. I mean, he from signed like, a lot. From yeah. hoop, from hoops to Donruss to Eminence to into every every single product he was in. So yeah, he did sign a lot. Yeah. R.I.P. Mambo. Yeah. I know, man. It's crazy. Now you can't even get a base card of him. I don't know what's going on with that. You need yeah, to get the yeah, state they signed. Him anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what's up. I don't know if it's his wife or his family or whatever. Like you, just have some base cards of him, some moments, some moment cards or something. Those would be huge, you know. Yep. So well, we know you're a busy man, so we appreciate your time, and Thank this is a great that, conversation, man. man. Thank you. Uh, check out little pull man, guys. Follow him on Instagram, and uh, we'll be checking you guys out later. Thank you, guys. Peace.